It took me 16 weeks to finish this nine week Python course, but I'm going to show you how to do it in two. So for me, I took Harvard's free online Python course. I was thinking that there's no better course than Harvard. And when I complete it, I would get a certificate and other people, other companies would hire me. And pretty simple. So uh, let me tell you what happened. When I first started the video, A, I would watch the video taught by Harvey Specter, a very good looking, very intelligent, very well spoken guy. He taught very, very well. Now, uh, I understood almost everything in the video. Uh, the problem came when I was doing the homework. Uh, the homework were called problem sets. And uh, the first problem set was pretty difficult. Uh, it was difficult because well, uh, what he went over in the videos were not matching with the homework problems that we were doing. The problem that I still remember that I had trouble with was that the video said, hey, what is x? Uh, what is y? What is x plus y? Uh, you get a variable for x, you get a variable for y, and then you add them together. The homework, on the other hand, is saying that Hey, here is the equation, right? 13 minus 7, right? What is the answer? Now, right? when you code that, it's very, very difficult because in one string, in one line, you have to break up the numbers, right? You have to know what sign is being used, and then you have to find the answer. So for a brand new person, a brand new student into Python, that's very, very difficult, especially when the videos don't tell you anything. Apparently, they think that we are all geniuses and we can all do these problems. Uh, little do they know, most of the people who are taking this are out of school, they've never learned Python, and they have no idea how to do these things. So, what is this cheat code that allows you to finish this whole course in two weeks? Well, it's to cheat, obviously, right? Uh, more specifically, you use AI to complete your problem sets. A lot of people use ChatGPT, but I prefer blackbox.ai. It's more for AI for programmers. Here, let me show you. All you need to do is copy this prompt, okay? and paste it to the AI, and ta-da! Okay? You get your answer in 15 seconds. You want to do it again? Yeah, eh? just copy this prompt eh? and then paste it to the AI and boom. Eh? There you have it. 15 seconds or less. With AI these days, why bother learning how to code for Python or for any other language? Eh? Now, for some of you guys, you guys might be thinking, Hey, Bon, and this is just way too much cheating. I, I mean, I'm not even learning any Python here. To that, I would say there's no such thing as too much cheating. Either you're cheating or you're not cheating. I, that's the only two things that you guys have. I, and also, uh, programmers do this. I, programmers copy and paste the articles, copy and paste the prompts, to AI, to Google, to GitHub, to anything else. Eh? And then they copy and paste the answers. So basically, you're doing what a programmer does anyways. And secondly, you're learning how to use AI, which is a very valuable tool to learn, right? because everything these days are AI. Now, if you guys are still uncomfortable with this, then, uh, let me show you guys a way to actually learn using AI and you might actually feel okay with this. Okay. So what you guys would do is, a, a yes, copy and paste the prompt into blackbox.ai. But after that, don't just copy and paste the code into uh, the program. Okay. What you guys should do is type up the code. Okay. Type it yourself. Now, what this does is that, number one, it builds your coding skills. Just typing it up actually helps you guys understand how the code works and helps you learn how to type code. 
which is very important because coding and typing code is a different language and it is something that you guys need to get used to. And number two, it helps your brain think in terms of coding. While you're typing, your brain is absorbing the information on how things are formatted, why things are the way it is, and why the code is written out this way. And when you guys come across something that you guys don't quite understand, you guys can ask blackbox.ai to explain it for you. Right? Like this, right? like in line 18, why did you guys use a double equal sign instead of just an equal sign? You type that in and then and there you go, it gives you a reason why. This immediate feedback is a very good way to learn because you guys have a question, you guys ask it and then it gives you the answer. It's like having a personal tutor right in front of you. Although like um, it's not an actual tutor because a tutor would actually challenge you and wouldn't give you the answers right away. And it would give you tips on how to learn these things. But a tutor would cost money and that is not something that I have. So AI is free. <laughs> Now, uh, there is one thing that you guys should know, and that is black box AI makes mistakes. It actually makes a lot of mistakes. Here, look at this. Okay. Let's say that you guys copy the prompt, okay. and, and what Harvard does is that it allows you to check your work. If you put this code in, it can check your work to see how it's going. And then there you have it, okay? You guys can see that, yeah, okay, it does do some things, but there's a lot of red, a lot of errors here. And then there are some green things. So it is up to you to actually fix the codes in the AI. And um, if you guys practice it, and if you guys understand how it works, then it should be relatively simple to fix this bug. Here, this is the fixed version. Okay. And there you go. Uh, all green and no errors. Uh, so, knowing how to fix code is a very big part of being a programmer. And I think that just because you're using AI doesn't mean that you're not you know, learning Python, eh? if you guys type it up, if you guys take your time to understand how the code works, and if you guys ask questions back to the AI, I think it is a very good way to learn. Okay, now you guys may be thinking, hey, Vaughn, am I really learning Python like this? And my answer to that is, eh? I mean, do you really need to learn Python to get a tech job? Eh? Isn't your employer just hiring you to get the job done? If you guys can get the job done using AI, what's the point of learning Python? Now, I do need to put a disclaimer that I did not finish this online Python course because uh, they kept asking me this honesty question policy thing that really hits you in the moral gut. So, um, uh, I didn't finish it, eh? but I did finish 90% of it, eh? you guys can see right here. I submitted all of it, I got a lot of it done. I just didn't finish the final project because I honestly don't think that it would help me get a job. Also, I don't have a job in tech, eh? I don't have a Python job, I don't have a coding job. So uh, don't listen to me. <laughs> And the chances are you guys probably won't be able to get a tech job anyways learning this Python code if you have no experience. Here's a clip of me and my friends talking about how tough the job market is today. My name is Min and I work at Meta and I am a, a cam image, camera image quality person. Uh, do you think it's possible to get a Python job with just an online course or a coding camp these days? No. <laughs> what a ridiculous question. I think that's maybe a like um, early 2000, 2000 thing, maybe. 2000? I think that's a bit too far. 2000, I was like in sixth grade. I don't know if coding... 
Yeah, I think it's 2000. No, I, I stand where I say. 2000. <laughs> <laughs> it's 12 years ago. Uh... Exactly. I, I, think, I think this field, I think the software field moves super fast. It depends. I think you're, if you do that, I, I think you should think about it like this. Like, if the bar is low, and I think it's low, like, it, to be realistic, you just pay money to take the course, and yeah. anyone could do that. Yeah. And you just finish it. And I, I don't, there's really no bar just to confirm. I don't even know if people really fail those things. One of the things that, that said, like, entrance to, like, a job or something, right? It's like, how many people have this? And if so, everyone has it. Like, that still happens with the university degree. Everyone has a university yeah. degree. That's, not, that's, like, default now. And I think it's starting to occur, too, that almost everyone has a PhD, too. Like, every couple of people have that, too. Well, yeah, but, like, uh, I do. At least where I'm at, there's people with PhDs all over the place, <laughs> right? What, when you're applying for a job, why pick someone who has a bachelor when they have a PhD, right? It's like it's it. like dating. It's like dating. Why 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 date someone who has like a, a Honda when they have a, <laughs> a Ferrari? A Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that may have been a very depressing view of the job market today, but. Um, please remember that I live in Silicon Valley where there are more tech guys than, I don't know, babies in the city. So for my situation right now, I believe that it's very difficult to get a tech job in the Silicon Valley. But it might not be for you. Right? You could be living in the middle of nowhere and have some tech jobs near you. But I believe that just taking a course online is probably not going to help you get a job. Obviously, I'm not successful. And, and success to me is not learning about Harvard's online Python course. It's not completing the course. Success to me is getting a Python job. And I don't think that I can. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you for listening. If you guys can relate or if you guys are in your mid-30s and are having trouble, let me know so that I know that I'm not alone and I can feel better about myself. Uh, I may be laughing, but I'm actually crying on the inside.